So a few weeks ago, Netflix finally released Cyberpunk Edgerunners, and I'm sure you've seen it surrounded by a lot of hype. Studio Trigger's best project thus far, the anime is set in the incredible world of Night City, and it follows our protagonist, David Martinez, through an extremely trippy 10 episodes of absolute chaos and unstoppable action, with a layer of emotion and heart that few anime achieve in the same runtime. If you haven't watched the show yet, go watch it right now. This is a heavy spoiler for the anime. And hey, before I get into it, why don't you go ahead and press that subscribe button while you're at it. Alright, let's start. Now though the plot is quite straightforward and at points predictable, the anime packs in an extremely efficient journey that attaches you to these characters and makes your heart yearn for them to have happy endings. Cyberpunk Edgerunners allows you and the characters to dream in this hellhole of a city that is designed to crush and ruin your dreams. I'll be mainly focusing on David and how he carries the dreams of these people around him. When we start the show, we're hit with David's life at the Arasaka Academy and we see his struggles ranging from bullying to being unable to afford upgrades to keep up with his class. Though not a dreamer himself, David lets himself go with the flow with his life thus far, with times being hard enough to barely even let him consider a dream in the city. As David falls into trouble at the school, we're immediately hit with the death of his mom during a cyberpunk smash and grab incident where she is left to die by their trauma team after they find out that she did not have the insurance to be treated. His mom dreamt of her son climbing the corporal ladder and standing at the top of Arasaka Tower, and she had worked herself to death for this dream. Hit with the brutal nature of Night City, David decides to carry on a piece of her legacy by adopting the high-vis jacket that she wore for work. With this sudden death, David is left directionless and struggling and the plot kicks into gear when he meets Lucy. After a day of abusing his Sandevistan to rob other people on the train with Lucy, he goes to her house and enters a BD with her, as they explore the moon and Lucy opens up to tell him about her dream to go to the moon. However, as he shares this amazing BD with Lucy, he gets a rude awakening from Maine and the gang for his Sandevistan. Left with no option, David asks to join the crew. As he joins them for jobs more often, we slowly see David integrate into the crew and get closer to Lucy, with whom he shares a relationship. David learns the ropes and the crew's plans go smoothly until we reach episode 6, the turning point of the show. The mission to extract information from Tanaka goes awry and things turn for the worse. Maine starts to reach his limit and inches into cyberpsychosis, losing himself entirely, which leads to the death of both him and Dorio. We see David in shock as a sharp shift in David's characters follow. As someone who was enamored by Maine and his values, he is once again hit with the brutal nature of Night City, one where dreams are merely passed on and rarely achieved. Maine, who had always wished to be a legend in Night City, tells David to keep running as he dies and David inherits yet another dream, a dream to be a legend in Night City. In a tragic sequence, we see David take over Maine's role in the crew and we witness him beef up and chrome up to the limit to continue the gang's operations for Faraday. He becomes the leader of the crew and inherits Maine's position and his hand chrome too, stepping physically and metaphorically into Maine's shoes. A short time skip follows and we see David pulling off multiple operations and becoming the reliable leader that Maine was. He has numerous upgrades now as he's almost doubled in size from the early part of the story and he has chrome in every part of his body. However, David starts to crumble under the pressure of the dreams he carries from his mom, Lucy, and Maine. And he starts to shake, have visions, throw up, which are all common signs of early cyberpsychosis. Instead of laying back on the chrome though, David pushes deeper and further into insanity as he follows the path that Maine had set him on, the only path he could conceivably think of in a city designed to spark out people like him. As the stakes get higher and higher, we see David lose his grip on reality as he is issued military grade medicine just to hold on to his sanity. At the same time, Faraday sets him up so that Arasaka could experiment on David due to his special nature of having an extremely high tolerance to chrome and cyber implants. In a heart-wrenching sequence, Faraday sets David to push past the limit and wear the military grade exoskeleton to protect the crew and the dreams that he carries. An insane decision. This was something only the forsaken, desperate, and selfless would do. David, knowing he'd become a cyberpsycho, installs the exoskeleton and takes on Militech as they hunt him down. 
In an exhilarating sequence, David fights as he injects medicine to fight off the cyberpsychosis. He fights, knowing that time is up. He fights for the dreams he carries. In the last episode, David reaches Arasaka Tower. He achieves his mom's dream, standing at the top of Arasaka Tower, looking down at the city with a grin. He achieves his mom's dream, yet this is the farthest from what she ever expected her son to do. He bastardizes his mom's dream, achieving it in the one way she would have never wanted it to happen. He reaches the top as the most wanted cyber psycho in Arasaka and the NCPD's lists. As he fights to protect Lucy against Adam Smasher, we see him achieve yet another dream. He has become a legend in Night City, the city he grew up in. He achieves Main's dream to gain the popularity and the infamous title of a legend of Night City. However, we see him once again achieve another dream that he carried, but in the exact opposite way. Main had told him to keep running and to prioritize his life, yet he did it at the cost of his own. He becomes a legend of Night City at the cost of his own life and his friends. He also achieves Lucy's dream, his most important. He sends her to the moon. However, he never realized the biggest thing she had always told him. Her dream had shifted. Her heart and her wishes didn't just include her anymore. It also included David himself. In his crazed journey to fulfill the dreams of the people around him, David never ever considered himself. Going out in a blaze of glory, he loses his life and he fails to fulfill Lucy's biggest dream for both David and Lucy to go to the moon together and leave Night City itself. As the show comes to an end, we see Lucy extremely sad but forlorn on the moon, missing the one person she wanted to be with forever. David Martinez is an excellent example of a character going through a negative character arc and a near perfect main character for the madness that is the setting of this show, Night City. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. I love Cyberpunk Edge Runners, and this has been one of the most emotional anime I've seen in quite a while. And honestly, it was really surprising because it was only 10 episodes. I can only wish for season two, but I think that would be ruining a story that was incredible.